So the class is called Stars and Galaxies, and our first week we were focusing on the background sort of concepts of astronomy. Uh, so we talked about stars and constellations and how they get names and the other sort of things that are out there and motions in the sky. So now we're going to actually start talking about the nature of stars. And to understand stars, we have to be able to describe a few things about stars. So one of the things that we can do here is talk about how bright they are. Well, the term we use to describe the brightness of a star is the magnitude of the star. And likewise, we can talk about measuring the distance of a star, how far away is a star, uh, the temperature of a star. We want to figure out how big is a star, and how much does it weigh, and what's it made out of. So these are all of the sort of measurements that we have to make to figure out about how stars work. Uh, we understand the sun is a star. And so to understand how the sun works, it's very complicated just to look at the sun and try to figure out how stars work. So what we do is we look at other stars to figure out how the sun works. The sun's vital to life on Earth, and so understanding how the sun works helps us understand how other stars work. And so that's kind of the idea here, uh, is understanding stars. First step is measuring the brightness of the stars. And so this idea goes all the way back to a fellow by the name of Hipparchus. And Hipparchus was an ancient Greek, and he measured star brightnesses. And he did this by something that we call magnitudes. And so what he did was he imagined, imagined taking all the stars in the sky and breaking them up into uh, uh, several uh, categories. One, two, three, four, five... Uh, uh, and so forth. Uh, and we now add six. But he just had five because he had five fingers. Uh, uh, but six categories of stars. And so these became the magnitudes. Now, the way he did this was he defined the magnitude as the category, the bin here that each one belongs in as in order of importance. So the first most important stars he called magnitude one second most magnitude two, third most magnitude three, and so forth. And so the thing is that what makes a star important? Well, to him it was brightness. So magnitude one stars are bright, magnitude three stars are dimmer, magnitude six stars are the dimmest ones that you can see. Uh, uh, um, and actually the dimmest you can see is magnitude five, because uh, magnitude six is just beyond, you know, uh, six point something is just beyond. Um, but we normally say the magnitude 6 is the dimmest that you can see. Uh, and, and so uh, that's, that's the general idea. And so this was, this was how it worked. He grouped all the stars. They later realized, well, it's not quite that, comp that easy because some stars are actually brighter than other magnitude 1 stars, so we call that magnitude 0. Some are brighter than that, this magnitude minus 1, and so forth. And so this extends this. And then they realize not all magnitude 2 stars are equally bright. Some are like halfway in between, so it's 2.5, 1.2, etc. So now we start putting numbers to this. On this scale, the sun is almost magnitude minus 27. Okay, Sirius, the brightest star in the sky, is almost magnitude minus 2. I'm going to round here a little bit. Uh, uh, how you measure it, there's different ways of measuring it, and they give you slightly different numbers. The dimmest that you can see, uh, um, a lot of books say magnitude uh, 30, uh, but the Hubble telescope at one point actually just pointed in one direction, looked there for like a week straight, um, and they got down to about magnitude 39, and that's really the absolute dimmest. So, the symbol for magnitude, lowercase m, here, okay, uh, in this table. Uh, so now the question is, uh, what's the brightest star on that list? Okay, now normally in class I'd, I'd have, you know, an exercise we'd go through. What's the brightest star on the list? What's the dimmest star on the list? And so forth. So the brightest star on the list would be the one with the smallest magnitude number. And that would be this, Alpha Carini. Now remember... 
Last week we talked about Bayer designations, the Greek letter Alpha, C-A-R is the official abbreviation for the constellation Carina. And so this is the star Alpha Carini. So that negative number makes that the brightest magnitude star. So what's the dimmest star on the list? Well, the dimmest star on the list is the biggest number. So that's right up here. That's going to be uh, the, the star Wolf 358. Okay. And so that's the brightest and that's the dimmest. Okay. So what's the dimmest one that you can see? Well, typically magnitude 6 is considered the, the dimmest. So this is, this is almost magnitude 7 right there. So that's too dim. So the dimmest you can see is right there, 44 Andromedae. Okay. And so, uh, uh, so we have 44 Andromedae. And that's the dimmest you can see at magnitude 5.7. The dimmest on the list is Wolf 358, magnitude 11.67. And the brightest was Alpha Carini. And that is magnitude uh, negative 0.67. So the next question is, well, how do you figure out how many times brighter? Because we can find out how many magnitudes brighter. Okay. So, for example, for the first two stars right here, you know, we have Fomalhaut and we have uh, uh, Wolf 358. And they are a difference of 10.1 difference in magnitudes. Okay, well, so we know the 10.1 difference in magnitudes. You know, what about uh, uh, these two stars? Psi Ursa Majoris, okay, and let's say the star Zosma. So what about those two stars? So they're a difference of 0.81 magnitudes. But really, how much is that really actual brightness? Well, one of the things we discover is that, that if you start looking at this group of stars here that, that he had from 1 to 6, the way your eye works, that's a difference of 100 times brightness. So, a difference of five magnitudes is 100 times difference in brightness. Okay. So, five magnitudes is 100 times in brightness. So, if that's the case, imagine that we have these stars up here. Okay. And we have star A, star B, star C. Okay, and star A is magnitude 2, and star B is magnitude 7, and star C is magnitude 12. And I want to know what's the difference in brightness between A and B. So between A and B, it's 100 times difference. Which one's brighter? Smaller magnitude is brighter, so star A is 100 times brighter than star B. So what about between B and C? That's also 100 times because it's five magnitudes. So five magnitudes is a difference of 100 times. So star B is 100 times brighter than star C. So now the question is, what about star A and C? So what about stars A and C? What's the difference in brightness? Now, think about it. Students will often say it's 200. Well, think about it. If this is 100 times that, but this one is 100 times that, what's 100 times 100? Okay, let's, 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 think, you know, let's think smaller. So let's say that one thing is three times the size of something else, and something else is three times the size of the thing, you know, some, some other thing. So, uh, or let's take a pizza. Okay, so we have a pizza, small pizza, divided it into four parts, and then we have four pizzas. Okay, and uh, math is always easier when you think about food. Okay, so uh, this slice of pizza is one-fourth of that, right? So we would say the pizza is four times bigger than that. 
Okay, so here, the entire group of pizzas is four times bigger than the one pizza. So how many times brighter, bigger is the entire, you know, the, the entire like, like uh, 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 table full of pizzas than the one slice? Well, it's not four plus four. It's not eight times bigger. It's four times four, 16 times more. So the same thing holds here. If star A is 100 times brighter than star B, and star B is 100 times brighter than star C, this is 100 times 100 times. So that means it is 10,000 times brighter. Okay, so let that sink in. A difference of 10 magnitudes, five magnitudes is 100 times brighter. 10 magnitudes is not 100 plus 100, it's 100 times 100. And so that would be 10,000 times brighter. So uh, let's now consider, remember I said that the sun is almost magnitude minus 27. Sirius is almost magnitude minus 2. So how many times brighter is the sun than the star Sirius? So this is a difference of 25 mags. 25 magnitude difference. So 25 magnitudes is five groups of five. Each group of five is 100. So what is five groups? Well, it's not five, it's not 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100. It's 100 times 100 times 100 times 100. So in other words, it's 100 to the fifth power. So what is that? So what is 100 to the fifth power? Okay. Well, that is going to be 10 to the 10th power. So in other words, that's going to be 10 billion times brighter. Okay. That's why you go out and look at the sun and it hurts your eye. You go look at Sirius and say, oh, that's bright. The sun's not just a few times brighter. It is 10 to the 10 times brighter, vastly brighter. And so that's because... 25 magnitudes is five groups of five, and each group of five is 100. So it's not five times 100, it's 100 to the fifth power. So we could then say the ratio of brightnesses. So what about one magnitude? We know that five magnitudes is 100 times different. So what's one magnitude? Well, again, it's not going to be 20. It's not divide. It's going to be one magnitude, whatever it is, to the fifth power. So whatever it is, is to the fifth power gives you 100. So that means one magnitude is going to be the fifth root of 100. Well, that turns out to be 2.512. So that means if you have two stars, star A and star B, and their difference of three magnitudes, so let's say this is star magnitude one, that one's magnitude four, then it'd be 2.512 to the third power. So you just enter that into the calculator, 2.512, and raise that to the third power, and that's gonna be about 16 times brighter. So anytime you have stars, and you look at that table of data, and it says you have a star of one magnitude, a star of another magnitude, then the difference in brightness is going to be 2.512 raised to the difference in magnitudes. So the L1 over L2, that's the ratio of the brightnesses. You don't need to know what those brightnesses are. You just know the ratio of them. The difference between them is 2.512 raised to the difference in magnitudes. You always take big number minus small number. Students always want to know which one do you subtract from which. Well, the big number, because the exponent has to always be positive. So it'll be whatever is the big number minus whatever is the small number.